My wife and I started renovating our apartment, and it was coming to an end. There was still painting to be done, and as a consequence, the stifling odor of solvent. We decided to spend the night at my wife's parents' house, who lived a five-minute walk from our house. My relations with her relatives were not very good, especially with my wife's stepfather, who liked to drink and then start to get conceited. She and her mother-in-law had no children in common. For some reason, it didn't work out. My wife was at work that day, so I quickly painted everything, left the windows open, and went to my mother-in-law's house. My wife and I agreed to be there by 6 o'clock, and she would come too. I didn't want to listen to moralizing alone. My mother-in-law was in the kitchen with a neighbor from the fifth floor, had already finished a bottle of cognac, and was having fun. In about five minutes, the neighbor went home to meet her husband from work, and we were left alone. My mother-in-law's husband was away on business in another city, and he was to arrive in a day. Son-in-law, let's have a drink while Claire's at work. My mother-in-law pulled a bottle of tincture out of her stash. Let's do it. I agreed. We drank a couple of shots with her, then the phone rang. My wife called to warn me that she would be late for two hours. Mother-in-law was well hung over and sitting at the table, paid little attention to her appearance. The floor and robe parted to the sides, and when she bent over the table, her charms were clearly visible. But the mother-in-law is not bad, I thought. The wife and mother-in-law were similar in figure, slender with a developed bust of size 3. That's a lot to take in. The mother-in-law was 42 the wife 21. I began to frankly assess her appearance. At this time, the mother-in-law came to the sink and went to the cupboard upstairs to get cups. Suddenly, the partition breaks off and the dishes are about to fly down. Dylan, help me quick, shouts my mother-in-law. I came up behind her and pressed myself tightly against her mother-in-law, but there was no other way to help. My mother-in-law smelled nice. The robe was almost all open and I stared at her. Basic instinct, nothing to do. My mother-in-law didn't notice anything yet, adjusting the dishes, rising and falling on her toes. It looked like she was rubbing against me, which put my boyfriend on alert. You're a hot lady, Doris, I said in her ear. Then she felt my tension in her body and froze in place. She was in shock and didn't know how to act. From the kitchen, we moved to the bedroom and I decided to take the initiative. Suddenly, the intercom rang. My mother-in-law looked at me fearfully, not knowing what to do. Tie your robe, go open the door, and then go to the kitchen to cook dinner, and I'll quickly clean up here, I said. She tied her robe and went to the intercom. I got dressed, made up the bed, and finding my mother-in-law's underwear, put it under my pillow. While the wife went up the elevator, I had time to do everything. When my wife came in, my mother-in-law was cutting salad, and I was on the balcony. How did you do without me? We didn't have a fight. And I'm dead tired at work. I'm going to take a shower, my wife said. I sat down to the table where my mother-in-law was cooking. She tried to act as if nothing had happened. In the evening, we sat down to dinner. When we went to bed, I began to pester my wife, but she refused, saying that she was tired and wanted to sleep. So I fell asleep. I woke up in the night from the desire to go to the toilet. Coming out of the toilet, I decided to go to my mother-in-law's bedroom. She was lying on her side with her back to me. Eh, I've been there. I closed the doors of both bedrooms and ducked under the covers from behind, and I started pestering her. What are you doing? Claire might wake up. My mother-in-law wailed, but there was no stopping me, so we did the very thing we'd been distracted from during the day. Then we lay cuddled together, and my mother-in-law cried that she was a good woman but that it was rare to be with her husband now, and I wanted to. It started to light up outside the window. Having kissed my mother-in-law, I went to my wife's bedroom. I quietly lay down in bed next to my wife. There was a gentle warmth coming from Claire. I hugged her. My touch woke her up. Come on, while mommy's asleep, my wife whispered. I was okay with one more time and agreed. In the morning, the wife left with her mother-in-law for the market, and I went to our house. A week later, my wife says to me, Mom asked me to hang a shelf. Can't the stepfather do it? I asked. He went away for three days, replied my wife, pouting lips. 
You what is difficult I and the shelf hung up on the fun to the full, so I and served my mother and daughter, but became the best son-in-law mother-in-law for me, mountain and nine months from that memorable night with a difference of a couple of days, my father-in-law and I took from the maternity hospital of their wives. They gave birth to boys who looked just like each other, their relatives. The father-in-law is proud of the heir, everybody's happy, and only my mother-in-law and I know our secret. Yeah, I'm 25. I got married only seven months ago and even then I made big plans for my life that in a year with my wife we will have a child and then buy a small house in the countryside. For a big one in our city with our salaries, we are unlikely to earn. I'm a realist. We'll build a house, get a dog, raise children and live happily ever after. I'm such a romantic. All my life I wanted a big family but my plans were not destined to come true. The other day, my wife shocked me by saying that she does not want children in the next few years, that's for sure. You see, she has a career, girlfriends with whom she sees every weekend, and in general she wants to live for herself. Not for me or us, but for herself. When I asked her why she got married, she smirked and said, you're handsome and I wanted to outdo the girls. You did. What else can I say? And without realizing it, she pushed me into cheating. Well, if I'm handsome, why don't I take advantage of it? I thought about my decision for a long time. It was possible, of course, to go the other way, to file for divorce and not ruin each other's lives, but I really wanted to hurt her. I knew that it's not the heart or the soul that gets hurt, but the ego first and foremost. But can you imagine if the precious girlfriends found out that Catherine, the first hottie in their group, had been cheated on by her husband? Then she's not so hot after all. She didn't give enough, so it's somewhere in the relationship. That's basically what she was. Perfectly conscious cheating, in my opinion, is sleeping with your wife's closest friend. But I never liked Zoe. She was like a boy. That heavy gait, the broad chin, the thinness that no clothes could hide. Every time I saw her, I got the shivers. And she was staring so hard that it felt like if Catherine left us alone right now, she'd lunge at me. I dismissed the friend option. I didn't want to go pick someone up at a club, either. It remained only to use the internet and dating sites. Although this way, I was not particularly happy. I would like to meet and immediately read in her eyes that she is ready and do it roughly, without shyness and any tenderness, and then break up for good. Probably, I would not have been destined to cheat on my wife if it had not happened one event, a fateful event that happened at such a crucial moment for me. My mother-in-law came to visit. That's when Jocelyn came into the kitchen. I was already sitting at the table drinking my coffee. Nothing stronger? My mother-in-law started the conversation. She sank down on a chair and put her foot on her leg. Then I took out a bottle of good expensive whiskey from the kitchen cupboard and took ice out of the freezer. My mother-in-law took the glass from my hands and tasted the drink. Her cheeks flushed in the warmth and she looked like a young girl who didn't mind getting naughty. Her foot under the table caught mine and I choked on a sip of coffee. When's Catherine coming? Jocelyn asked as if nothing had happened and sipped more whiskey. Tonight, I answered in a husky voice, and I felt a fire starting inside, a sweet aching in my lower abdomen. This is what I wanted so badly. Sitting in front of me, sipping an iced whiskey, and keeping her beautiful green eyes on my face. As if reading my thoughts, my mother-in-law reached out and touched my hair. Lucky Catherine, she said softly, and moved closer to my face. And before I could respond, she kissed me gently on the lips, as if testing to see if I would go along. Thoughts of the fact that this was my mother-in-law and this was not the way to do it faded into the background. Even if my wife appeared on the kitchen doorstep now, I wouldn't be able to break the kiss. The excitement inside was building like a wild beast, ready to burst out at any second. Jocelyn's scent was as intoxicating as whiskey. I nuzzled into her neck and her hand slid under my shirt and found my belt. It was like a dream, and I didn't want to wake up. I cheated on my wife right on the kitchen table, on the tablecloth she had spent so long choosing. Then my mother-in-law and I moved into our bedroom and continued our sessions. It was amazing. It was like nothing I could have ever dreamed of. When it was over, I brought whiskey and made myself comfortable on the bed. We lay side by side, naked, discussing the weather and drinking whiskey straight from the bottle. I felt alive and happy in a way I hadn't felt in a long time. When we finished the whiskey, Jocelyn gently stroked my cheek, asking me what we were going to do next. 
I don't know what she meant, whether it was to tell my wife that I had cheated or what we were going to do, but I didn't say anything and nestled against her lips. It had been a month since the day I first cheated on my wife with my mother-in-law. We had become lovers, wild and insatiable, who loved each other like it was the last time. Catherine suspected nothing of our affair or even had a clue. The thought of my betrayal could not even enter her pretty little head. Every night she discussed topics that didn't interest me, such as what hairstyle to wear to a meeting with the girls, whether it was worth buying a coat or a fur coat, and whether that lipstick was aging her. I agreed with her, thoughtlessly answered, and waited with bated breath for a new meeting with my mother-in-law. And my mother-in-law always came as liberated as possible. From the threshold, she fell into my lips and led me to the bedroom, and I obeyed and wanted only one thing, that these meetings never ended. It happened three months after the day I became my mother-in-law's lover. I had three days off, so Jocelyn and I were already in the bedroom, trying new positions and exploring each other's heated bodies for the thousandth time. We were so engrossed that we didn't hear the front door slam. If before I wanted my wife to catch me with another woman, now everything had changed. I seemed to have fallen in love, lost in those enchanting emerald eyes. When my wife saw us naked and happy, she made a scandal, throwing at me everything she could get her hands on. She broke an alarm clock, a vase, and several bottles of perfume. At that minute, I greedily inhaled the odors of expensive perfume that hung in the room, and the bitterness from my hysterical wife, and the relief I felt myself. Still, I was very glad Catherine had found out about everything, even if it wasn't how I'd envisioned it all. While my wife was throwing things at me, I thought of Jocelyn and me, of the revenge I'd uncovered, and of the fact that we could no longer hide sleep in the same room and meet in the morning together, have intercourse to wake up faster. But as it turned out, my mother-in-law didn't share my views at all. While we were arguing, she quickly got dressed and left. Then as I found out, she made me out to be the culprit and said that she had broken up with her ex, just wanted someone to talk to, to express herself, and I had seduced her. I didn't mind, took the blame, feeling like cold hands, pain clutching my heart, it's amazing because you really don't know where you can find and where you can lose. My wife filed for divorce. I didn't object, packed my things and left. I wasn't thinking about Catherine at all, reveling in the fact that I had managed to hurt her. I was thinking about how much I had hurt myself. I wished I could see Jocelyn for just a moment, touch her hair and smell the sweet scent of her perfume. But she didn't pick up her cell phone, didn't answer her texts, as if what happened was really my fault alone. And only once, then we met with her in a restaurant. I was having lunch with a colleague at work. When I saw her at a neighboring table, she was gorgeous as always, in a tight black dress, high heels, and a white smile on her bright scarlet lips. Her beau was no older than I was, and he held her hand reverently, as if he was afraid she was about to fly away and he would never see her again. Our eyes met, and Jocelyn saluted me with a glass, as if it were nothing and I did not remain indebted. Our paths had not crossed since, but I still waited with bated breath to see if we would ever meet again. Peace in my university studies were coming to an end. One more week, and I would be free. Finally, the day would come when I would return to my quiet town and be able to hug my darling and beloved Eva. My bride-to-be is very pretty. She is a young, slender, beautiful, and very modest girl. We met a year ago at a university ball. She immediately turned my head, and I did not hesitate to take her in a turn. I'm almost 30, and it's time to settle down. Eva was the perfect wife for me, and so the day came. I drove my not-too-new Mercedes to the house where my new bride lived with her parents. It was a big house with two wings. One wing was for Eva and her parents, the other wing was for guests and servants. The door swung open, and Eva rushed out to meet me followed by her mother in the doorway. I hadn't met Gail, Eve's mother's name before. I gave Eva a bouquet of flowers, which she thanked me with a tender and gentle kiss. Her mother was watching the whole scene. We approached Gail and Eva introduced me to my future mother-in-law. I have to say, she made a lasting impression on me. She was just above average height, incredibly good looking, and with a velvet voice that flowed like a song. It's a pleasure, Matthew, she said. Turns out my daughter has excellent taste. She looked at me with a searing look in her emerald green eyes 
and led us into the living room. Eva's father was a clerk and was hardly ever home. This evening he was working late. We sat at the huge table talking sweetly and devouring a very sumptuous dinner. But one thing that confused me was that I kept catching Gail's eyes. And I gotta tell you, it was a promising look. She was looking at me like a boa constrictor at a rabbit. As she sipped from her crystal wine glass, she ran the tip of her tongue along her plump lower lip. Dinner came to an end. We thanked the hostess and went to bed. We were considered bride and groom, but we slept in different rooms at Eva's parents' house. I was assigned a guest bedroom in the second wing. I kissed Eva tenderly and went to my room. The night was very warm, the moon was full. I rolled around a little and sort of dozed off. Through my sleep, I heard my door open with a slight creak. At first, I thought it was a draft. I lay quietly and stared at the doorway. In the moonlight, I saw a ghost, not a ghost of course, but Gail. She was wearing a white translucent negligee with nothing on underneath. Despite her age, which was approaching 45, her figure was flawless. She covered the distance between the doorway and my bed in a few seconds, and before I knew it, she was lying next to me completely naked. Her lips caressed me so skillfully and so passionately. She covered my mouth with her palm so I couldn't say anything. But to tell you the truth, I didn't try. I didn't want to and couldn't resist the passion that seized us both. She was a very skillful lover, but I was no slouch either. Our tandem was a success. We both finished at the same moment. Gail lay on the cool silk sheets and moaned softly in pleasure. Babe, she said softly, you're an excellent lover. Thank you, I replied. It was kind of a surprise. She slipped out of my embrace while kissing me for some reason on the nose and said, Baby, this will remain our secret. But I don't rule out meeting again. The door closed with the same slight creak. I lay there in a slight shock, not realizing how everything would go on in my life. 